Well, hello, good evening, and welcome to yet another program of Parliamentary Agenda. And uh, this evening, I have with me uh, Bishop Juan Edgel, Minister of Public Works, uh, who is sitting with me, and he will be with me for just about an hour. Uh, we hope to be um, touching on some issues that will give you more clarity and make you understand, um, as it relates uh, this time, the works of the PAC, which is a Public Accounts Committee, a very important committee in the House and Parliament. And uh, this evening, uh, Bishop Edger will be sharing with me um, some revelations coming out of um, the Auditor General's report 2016. Um, some information I think he wants to make sure all and sundry are aware of where, where the findings will take the country and what transpired in the past and the due process. It's my pleasure to welcome you, sir. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much and good evening to all of your viewers and listeners. And certainly it's a joy to be a part of this program, the Parliamentary Agenda. That's right. Um, uh, I started by saying, sir, the issue tonight we're dealing with will be the PAC's work and the revelation coming out of um, uh, the Auditor General's Report 2016. Um, some starting information. Of course, um, you've got it just ready at the tip of your mouth to share with us. <laughs> well, <clears throat> the Public Accounts Committee is a standing committee of the National Assembly. The purpose of the Public Accounts Committee is to scrutinize government spending. Mm -hmm. So the government of the day comes to the parliament with a budget. It's called an appropriation bill. It becomes right. an, appro up an appropriation act. Sums are appropriated and allocated to government ministries and regions. And in every agency, there's what is called an accounting officer. Mm -hmm. That accounting officer, it's either the permanent secretary or the regional executive officer. Or in some of the constitutional agencies, there's a chief executive officer mm -hmm. that is the accounting officer. Monies are then disbursed to these agencies to be spent in both current and capital. Mm -hmm. Current referring to the mundane things like wages and salaries, purchase of stationery, mm -hmm. uh, maintenance the of their operation. vehicles, paying electricity bills. Mm -hmm. And then on the capital side of the, project, of the program is where you're doing buildings or purchasing capital items. Correct. The Auditor General is empowered under the Audit Act of Guyana to check to see, one if the monies were received properly, mm -hmm. if it was expended according to what it was appropriated for, because it's not just that the money must be spent, correct, but what it was appropriated for. And he's also empowered to check to see if the process that led, led, led to the spending of that money was in keeping mm -hmm. with the laws of Guyana, in, in, in this case, the Fiscal Management and Accountability Act. Mm -hmm. And then he's also to check to ensure that after the money is spent, the items procured were actually delivered. And then he's also to check to ensure that when the items are delivered, it is properly stocked or stored, which means it becomes the ownership, becomes and is owned by the agency that procures it. Mm -hmm. Then he also has to check to ensure that when it is used or disbursed, that it was done in keeping with the rules and the regulations. And of course, he has the power also to check to see if in the transactions, we got value for money because you can't be buying pens for an office at a hundred million dollars when pens should really be a fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollar purchase. Correct. So you got to check for value mm -hmm. for money. So the Auditor General goes through 
every agency that receives money from the consolidated fund and he's empowered on the law to present a report to the Speaker of the National Assembly and he has a deadline. So for the 2016 report, his deadline would have been the 30th of September 2017. Mm -hmm. So for 2017's report, his deadline for submission will be the 30th of September 2018. 2018. One of the new developments that we have in Guyana, and thanks to the People's Progressive Party Civic, is that we have a functioning audit office mm -hmm. of Guyana. You know, if you recall, during a period 10 years from 1991, backwards, there were no audited reports mm. okay. of the public accounts of Guyana. And we just need to pause during the period 1991, 10 years backwards, so 10 years, monies were spent in Guyana. And the Auditor General didn't check based upon what I just outlined as his job. Mm -hmm. Now, when the Auditor General presents his report to the Speaker of the National Assembly, the law requires that at the first sitting after that, that report is tabled in the House. The Speaker presents that report to the House. Every member receives a copy of the report. The report. That report is then sent to committee for examination and consideration. That committee is what is called the Public Accounts Committee. And by convention, practice, and norms in the Commonwealth parliamentary system, whoever is the opposition of, at that time scrutinizes the expenditure of the government mm -hmm. as a way of holding the government accountable. accountable. Mm -hmm. So the government spends, the chairmanship of that committee is with the, the opposition. opposition who scrutinizes uh, and leads, I should say, the committee in scrutinizing the, the public accounts and the, and the Auditor General's, General's report. report. When the public accounts committee is finished scrutinizing, offering their opinions and discussing all of the findings, a report from the public accounts committee goes to the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. So the committee reports to the entire House. And after the committee reports to the House, the Minister of Finance has to, re has to prepare what is called a Treasury Memorandum. Mm -hmm. And in his Treasury Memorandum, he has to say to the Parliament how he's going to fix and remedy all the findings of the Auditor General and the matters that came up in discussion of the committee. I think he has like 90 days or something like that okay. um, to get that Treasury Memorandum. I, I, don't hold me on the tag, but I think it's 90 days. Mm -hmm. Back to the House. So it's a process that allows for scrutiny, accountability, and to ensure that public monies are being properly spent and accounted for. Mm -hmm. And the Public Accounts Committee is one of the committees that its consideration of all that is taking place is done in the public view, which means the public can sit in or the media can sit in and make the information available to the public. So there's no bosom no secrecy and secrecy and incestuousness okay. that could take place in the committee. Mm -hmm. This is about public disclosure. Mm -hmm. So a public officer, before he starts spending or takes instructions to spend, mm -hmm. because some of them actually get instructions, they must know 
that your actions will come up for but public the scrutiny. Are. The public will be aware of what transpired, and you will have to give an account in a public manner. Correct. So that is why it's called the Public Accounts, Accounts Committee. Right. So I thought I will give you that. That is uh, and great. to help your viewing and listening public of what transpires. That is terrific food for thought, and it brings home the entire conversation. Let's get right into um, one of the areas that um, sharing, speaking with you off camera seems to be a spot of bother, and this is infrastructure, an area that coming out of the 2016 out of the General's report, um, I think you find troubling. Let's talk about that. Very, very, very troubling. Well, the first thing, um, Mark... And this is something that we have to get streamlined. We are considering 2016 audit report when the APNU AFC was in office. They were the government that receives the, received the monies from the consolidated fund. It was their assigned and appointed accounting officers that expended these monies, and now they're sitting as opposition to scrutinize their own period. So it's, it is highly laughable. So what you had taking place at the public accounts is that Mr. Patterson, who was one time Minister of Public Infrastructure, is the chairman of the public accounts committee, scrutinizing the public accounts of Guyana, for a period of which he was a sitting minister and which he is cited with some of the worst violations that you could find in a public, uh, in an Auditor General's report. I want to read from the Auditor General's report of 2016. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you come to programs like these and you speak, people will often say, you just blame politics and you want the other side to look bad. Mm -hmm. Well, this is not Edgil. This is the state auditors, the audit office of Guyana, mm -hmm. who's writing. I want to read the, 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 very, the very first thing. In, in an audit report, you could get a qualified opinion an unqualified opinion or a disclaimer. And this is, this is what the auditors are saying. Qualified opinion. I have audited the public accounts of Guyana, which comprise of the consolidated fund statements and accounts of all budget agencies and appropriation accounts, and the statement of receipts and disbursements of ministries, departments, and regions for the fiscal year ended 31st of December 2016 as set out in pages 465 to 540 of volume 1 and 2, and 1 to 2, 227 of volume 2. My audit was carried out in accordance with sections 24 and 25 of the Audit Act. In my opinion, mm -hmm. except for effects of the matters which might have shown to be necessary as a result of the observations contained in the relevant sections of my report. The financial statement present present fairly in all matter, material respects the end of year budget outcome and reconciliation report of the consolidated fund. The financial information necessary to present fairly the financial transactions and financial positions of the state and schedule of public debt for the fiscal year ended 31st of December 2016. So he's saying, I have done what I'm supposed to do. And then he says, I do not express an opinion. This is a disclaimer now. Mm -hmm. I do not express an opinion on the receipts and payments of the contingency fund, the financial reports of the deposit fund, and the assets and liabilities of the government which forms part of the consolidated financial statements because of the significance of the comments as contained in the relevant sections of my report. I have not been able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to provide a basis for an audit opinion 
on these statements for the fiscal year ended 31st of December 2016. I don't need to give an in interpretation. This is clear. Now, when it comes to the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, we had serious violations. But one of the areas that we had serious problems um, was concerning the purchase of some motion scales. Okay. Now, had we had these motion scales in the, the possession of the government, we had control on our streets, mm -hmm. would have been more control because we have real serious problems with overladen trucks on our streets, and that is lending to a lot of damage. So it was a good project that I guess the technicians in the ministry said we need to get this is a requirement. The, the, we need to get scales so we could monitor what's going mm -hmm. on, whether it's on the hinterland roads or at our, and the bridges as well. Uh, and, and the bridges as yeah. well. So we be able to get that going. So monies were appropriated to uh, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure to buy these scales. As we sit here tonight, the ministry is not in possession of those scales. This is 2021. As we sit here tonight, the ministry is not in possession of those scales. And you might want to say, well, what happened? Well, Mr. Patterson was sitting as the senior minister, and we had Miss Annette Ferguson, who was sitting as the junior minister in the ministry. And monies went to a company for the purchase of these scales. Three scales. And like I said, they are not yet delivered. So the Auditor General spoke about that in his report. And of course, that was one of the things that we were considering at the time when we had to end up with a no confidence motion against Mr. Patterson as chairman and for him to be removed. But I don't think we want to use this program tonight to discuss that. Absolutely. I want to bring to your attention, as a result of what the Auditor General wrote in his audit report, mm -hmm. since I'm the minister, I've had cause to conduct a forensic audit. This is the report of the forensic audit only on the scales. And I want to tell you what the forensic auditors have said to us. The forensic audit have indicated to us that these scales, the monies were paid to a company called NEFPRO. Okay. It's a company supposedly out of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. One hundred percent of the contract sum was paid to the supplier. Not fifty percent. One hundred percent of the contract sum was paid to the supplier. And we don't have the scales. So the Auditor General cited it as a issue for concern. So from the forensic audit, which I now have, mm -hmm. we are told who is the owner of this company. So, 
a Mr. Alston Stewart, and a Mr. Keody Stewart. Alston Stewart is the political strategist that boasted that he put the marriage of the APNU and the AFC together to get the PPPC out of office. This is the owner of the company. The general secretary of the AFC, who was the minister of public infrastructure at the time, is buying from his political strategists who helped to put him in office, scales. He pays his political strategists 100% of the contract sum. And we don't have the scales as yet at the Ministry of Public Works, as it is now called. Now, I don't come here because you have to be careful that you don't slander anybody. Mr. Trotman, Raphael Trotman, went to Jamaica. I think cricket was playing or something, or he was um, out there in his own personal business or something in the side. And the media asked him about the APNU, AFC's government, close association with the PNP mm. of Jamaica. And this is what he's saying. I'm quoting, right? Among the benefits of the close association with the PNP, Trotman insists, was the loan to Guyana of senior PNP election strategist and media owner, Alston Stewart, who was the driving force behind the coalition's narrow 5,360 vote win over the long-standing People's Progressive Party Civic, which had ruled Guyana for 23 years prior to the May general elections. So I'm just establishing it's not a different Stuart. It's the same Stuart. Mm -hmm. And Trotman is very fine that Alston Stuart was their political strategist. Mr. Stuart got himself involved with traveling with ammunition, I think, within his luggage. And he was held in Trinidad for having ammunition in his luggage. And the news came out in Guyana, the Starbrook News. Alston Stewart, a Jamaican advisor to the Alliance for Change, has explained an incident to the Piaco International Airport, Trinidad, where a firearm magazine was found in his luggage. The statement was released by the Alliance for Change. It has come to my attention that has been, this is Alton's, Alston's short statement now. Mm. It has come to my attention that it is being reported in sections of the Guyanese, tradi tra Guyanese traditional as well as social media that I was busted at the Piaco International Airport with ammunition in my luggage. This is an attempt to twist an unfortunate but innocent incident to give the impression that there was a sinister plot to smuggle ammunition as I was on my way to Guyana for pre-arranged meetings as an AFC election strategist. So he is saying he was an election strategist. The chairman leader of the Alliance of Change, Raphael Trotman, is saying they got a loan from the PNP in the person of Alston Stewart, and my forensic auditors are telling me 
based upon their findings, that the, the case of the missing skills, the company that received tens of millions of dollars is a company owned by Alston and Keone Stewart, and Alston Stewart is the political strategist. Now, if this is not corruption, Mark, tell me what is. The general secretary of a political party who's a sitting minister takes taxpayers' money, 100% of a contract sum, which means the man didn't even have to have the scales at the time. You give the man the entire amount, including his profit. Because 100% of a contract sum includes his profit. He could have taken that money, take out his profit, up front. He didn't do nothing yet, but he don't, don't got his profit. He could have bought the scales, ship it to Guyana, and this matter would have been closed. And we would not have been talking about it at Public Accounts Committee. Neither would we be speaking about it on studio tonight about what's some of the revelations. Mm -hmm. The Auditor General didn't have to talk about this. What really transpired here? What's the price of one of those scales? The, the exact contract sum, I think it was in excess. I'll, I'll get that figure for you shortly. But it was tens of millions. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, it was tens of millions. I'll get the exact sum. Mm -hmm. Um, for you in, in, a, in, in a moment. I'll go back to the Auditor General's report and make sure that I get the exact sum um, for, for those scales. So this is the nature of what takes place at the public accounts. If the Auditor General was not diligent or was not doing his work and you didn't have a public accounts committee a transaction like this would have disappeared and nobody would have known about it. Minister, what's the consequence of these findings? Well, the consequences is that, number one, once there are breaches of the Fiscal Management and Accountability Act, and there are definitely breaches, the public officer who facilitated that transaction um, could be charged. And that includes the minister. Mm -hmm. Once it could prove that the minister was involved. Have we had that happen before in Guyana? Where, I don't... Where a, a sitting minister or a, a former minister and the whole line they are held accountable for vi violations like these? I cannot Because recall. of the general's report is a very serious document. I cannot recall any minister being charged and convicted. But what I know is that there was an amendment to the Fiscal Management and Accountability Act right. to facilitate even the minister and to enforce that role. So it's a matter of what happens now. You would recall that while we were in opposition, we filed private criminal charges against Mr. Patterson, Mr. Jordan, Mr. Rupnerang for Durban Park, which was also in the 2016 Auditor General's report. And those cases were Null Prost, mm -hmm. and they're, they're still outstanding. What happens now is something still to be determined. Because what they did at Durban Park was that they took more than 500 million of taxpayers' money and give it to a private company, Home Stretch Development Inc. which was the secretary of that company was a APNU AFC activist, Larry London. This, there are no contracts from the Ministry of Public Infrastructure 
to show that the Ministry of Public Infrastructure went into a contractual agreement with contractor A to build stands, B to do the tarmac, C to put in lights or anything of the no sort. Paperwork no all. paperwork. As a matter of fact, none of the contractors had a contract with the ministry. So the ministry took the money and gave it to a private company. And up until now, that is not something that has been explained. I'm sure the people of Guyana will want to hear the end of this and to find their consequences as a result of whatever the findings are. Well, as it relates to what is coming out of the report. That's why the public accounts must be able to do its work. And all the noises that were being made by the opposition, and I, I, I think that they have absolutely nothing to do. They can go into the communities and speak to people because they lie to the people, they deceive the people, they're disliked by their own people. So the only place that they can go is on Facebook. And every time they go on Facebook, it's misinformation, lies, and deception. You know, and sometimes the things that they utter, they are senseless, useless, and baseless. And you want to know if these are people that the public purse is funding. As parliamentarians, they get paid. They should be out there in the fields talking to people, but they can't go. Now, you, you, you have an op opposition right now who was in government. We are distributing the 15,000 because we care crash Gant and the 4,000 um, uniform. uniform voucher assistance. And you're telling people not to collect the money. It's campaign trickery. It's a gimmick. The next is elections. <laughs> 2025. Okay. But it is not an election gimmick, Mark. I just asked a question. In 2014, we <clears> give 10,000 <throat> per child in the public school. Mm -hmm. In 2015, when they came in, they squashed it. It cost us about $1.8 billion to do that in 2014. In the 2015 budget, they increased dietary by $1 billion and said they didn't have money to give the school children. We came back into government, and in the first year of government, we have restored it at 15000 and while we were campaigning, we told the people our commitment with the cash grant, education cash grant, because we care cash grant, is that we will phase it over the five-year period to 50,000. Okay. So we started this year at 15. Now, you're going to tell the people don't take the money. And you're telling your own supporters who will disobey you and say you're up on stupidness. The people are turning out. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to Linden. And the people will be there to get their cash grants. We're going to go to Bartica and New Amsterdam and Buxton and Victoria and Golden Grove and Itica and, and Mocha, wherever you want to call your stronghold. And we're not there to do politics. We're there to deliver the services to the people of Ghana because they deserve it. They are citizens and they're entitled as citizens, not, when you form a government, you don't just look after the people who vote for you. You have to take care of the whole country. Right. And that's what the PPPC has done all the time. Right. But coming back to the public accounts um, committee and, and, and the whole issue, it is unfortunate that in 2021, we're examining... 2016. 2016. And it would appear that there is no appetite to deal with these matters the way they need to be dealt with. Because as the opposition, the watchdog 
of the public purse, the person who is sitting in the chair at the Public Accounts Committee should be railing and saying, let's get to the bottom of this. Let's get to the bottom and find out where NEFPRO is. We need the money back from NEFPRO. We need to call the police in on this. We need to get the public officer on the oath to testify because you can do that. Mm -hmm. The public accounts can receive evidence on their oath. Get the public officer to explain why you paid 100% and not delivered. And of a contract which did not allow for 100%. But the person who is sitting as the chairman of the public accounts was a part of the government that facilitated this kind of recklessness. So what they would like to happen is for this is fit, just get through this as fast as possible. Let's just rush this. Let's get, get over this because this is not good for us. Well, every member of the Public Accounts Committee, when they sit there, must not be thinking about party politics. Must be thinking about the public's purse, protecting the public's purse, ensuring the public good, ensuring transparency and accountability. And I can tell you, the members of the PPPC who sit in the Public Accounts Committee, Madam Gail Teixeira, Myself, Dr. Vishwa Mahadio, Mr. Dan Kumar Siraj, Mr. Datadin, we are committed for public scrutiny. And the Public Accounts Committee will always be the place where you can have a showdown be at this time, because we are examining the APNU AFC record. And Mark, we are on record. Vice President, now Bar Jagdio, then opposition leader, Bar Jagdio, said to this whole country, the most corrupt administration Ghana's ever seen was the APNU AFC. This Auditor General report of 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019 will make that case. You're sharing with us one issue out of a number of issues. This is this, the, the report. Every agency that have paragraphs that require e explanation are here. One, one, of the, one of the big issues that, yes. that came up in the Public Accounts uh, Committee is about overpayment of contracts. And I think the last meeting we had, this made the news about overpayment yes. of contracts. I want to read what the Auditor General said. Overpayments amounting to 82.658 million were made on measured works on 98 contracts administered by ministries, department, regions in 2016. 82.658 million. And overpayment means the contractor got more money than That's work limited. delivered. And this is on measured works, where an engineer, a superintendent of works, or a skilled person that needs to check to see. This fence is supposed to got 1,500 blocks. Specification. Let's come to see, make sure it got. The road is supposed to be a, a, a one kilometer or 300 meters. Let's measure it to make sure. It's supposed to be have two inches of asphalt. Mm -hmm. Or it's supposed to be 17 meters wide. Let's check to make sure. All the specs it, are right. All the specs are right. You know what the Auditor General is saying here? It's either there was collusion or negligence. Because a contractor could only get paid after somebody writes a certificate that says, works satisfactorily completed or in an interim payment certificate, which is called an IPC, the volume of the amount to be paid is equivalent to the work that is being done. The scope of work. So somebody wrote saying that they got the work done. When the auditors went, he found out that $82.5 million 
more than should be paid on 98 contracts. This happened 98 times. Not one time, not three times, 98 times. And the two ministries that were cited and named in this paragraph, the ministries of public security and public infrastructure. The Ministry of Public Security, which was at the time Vice President Ramjatan, and the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, David Patterson, the leader of the AFC, the General Secretary of the AFC. And they are cited in this paragraph. So, and the AFC told this nation that they're going to be the watchdogs to prevent corruption. And, and they were the ones who were holding us to ransom in the last parliament, with the, uh, not the last one, the one before, the, 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 that would be the 10th parliament, mm -hmm. the Public Procurement Commission. And then you guys would remember that these were the ones who were talking about ensuring that we have the Public Procurement Commission and the Public Procurement Commission, they were prepared to put, it, uh, put us at risk to be blacklisted by the Financial Action Task Force when we had to get specific legislation passed about anti-money laundering and the fi financing um, terrorism. Countering the financing of terrorism. And they were holding us to ransom. Get the PPC in place. The Public Procurement Commission was like if it was an end all. And the two of them went into government for five years. And they are cited in the 2016 report, which is the first full year that they spent in government for overpayments in the ministries that they were the ministers over. So we, we, we have to uh, deal with that. Now, every transaction in government, before you get to a check, you have the vouchers. Yeah. Here what the Auditor General says. 451 payment vouchers, 451 payment vouchers valued at 374 million, 374, 394 million, were not presented for audit. So there were 374 million dollars that was spent that the payment vouchers to accompany these transactions for the auditors to read and verify what these vouchers and this money was really spent for. The auditors never saw the vouchers, so they can't verify what is going on. 433 of those vouchers alone value 352 million, or 94% of the total value. Right? And these were in respects of two regions. Okay. Region 1 and Region 8. Okay. Small regions. And we could go into the history and see who the APNU AFC put as their accounting officers in those regions. And this is the difficulty that we will have. The, the auditors say, as a result, it could not be ascertain whether the value was received for the sums involved and where it has been used for the purpose intended. The lack of vouchers. The auditor said, I can't tell the country that the, the money really was spent and that we received what the money was spent for because you could come and tell me well, we buy food, we buy this, we buy that, but the vouchers. How are we to show that this is not monies that were siphoned off for campaigning purposes and another payback to a NEFPRO type arrangement? Yeah. 
And that is why at the public accounts, you got to keep your ears and eyes open. You got to be diligent. And the sad thing is we are in government participating in the public accounts committee that should be scrutinizing government. And the people who are chairing and presiding over the scrutiny, they are scrutinizing the years when they are in government. So the people of Ghana will be fully aware. They don't want this kind of discussion to take place when the public accounts meet on Mondays. If we could, you know, get these things through and it becomes uncomfortable and you have the obstructionist approach of some who would like to try to spin and all the rest of it. All we're dealing with is what happened in 2016. So now we've, ha we've, we've, we've had to ask public officers because a lot of the permanent secretaries and accounted officers that are coming in 2021 are not the same people that were in position in 2016. The law allows for those officers who sat in 2016 to accompany and be part of the team. That has happened in a couple of occasions. And people either can't remember or, or they're, they're fudging and trying to play around with the issues. But our accounted officers now, excuse me, have the devil's job to get systems in place to stamp out some of these serious infractions. You've always gone on record as saying that corruption is not something that you will stand for. The people of this nation will be asking the question with the information you share tonight, consequences, what chain reaction they will be expecting and how soon will that be? It is the Public Accounts Committee that will have to prepare the report at the end of the examination, correct, to go to send it to the parliament with recommendations of what needs to be done. And the parliament will have to accept that report or throughout the report by the majority. But I don't see any responsible parliament having had the benefit of the audits report and then you had the benefit of the explanations of the public because what you're basically doing at the public accounts committee is not asking the public officer if this happened the auditors said it happened auditors saying right we're asking them how it happened how did it what did you do about explain. this explain to us give us an understanding how this happened mm. how are we going to fix this So, down the line, at the completion of 2016, a report will have to go to the National Assembly. In the case of the missing skills, I have received a forensic audit report. Mm -hmm. I have brought this to the attention of the Cabinet. The Cabinet has asked that the report be sent to the Attorney General so he could study it to see what could be done. Mm -hmm. The Attorney General has since indicated to me, not so long ago, that he has found several breaches in his mind of the Fiscal Management and Accountability Act. He will be sharing this report with the Commissioner of Police and the DPP, but he has also said to me, he believed there are grounds for civil action to be taken for the recovery of the sums expended. And that is one of the actions you could be assured of. I don't know what the Commission of Police right. will do or the DPP will do that. Those are entities outside of our control. Mm. But as it relates to me, sitting now as the Minister of, Mini uh, of Public Works, the monies were appropriated through that ministry we will be make, taking steps for the recovery of the sums. Civil action. Those skills are very important. Yes. Right now, they need to be used. Every, the one reason why I talk about it 
is because it's a problem. Our road maintenance program is in shambles because of the weight issue. And if everybody will just go, because when you overload a truck, the weight moves from being transferred to the axles because the axles could only carry and bear a certain amount of weight. The weight is no longer on the axle, but it's now moving off of the axle to the actual road. So when you slow down on the road, and you got 35, 40 tons on a truck that was only supposed to carry 20 tons or 22 tons, and you go to take off, and that revenue and the, road, the weight is on the road, you're digging into the road to move. So our hinterland roads, and of course the bridges, uh, we are seeking to remedy that now, because along the Linden Lethem Road, we've had a couple of bridges that were broken, and that's because they were largely timber bridges. Mm -hmm. And on an on, on overladen truck on a timber bridge with the wear and tear over a period of time, it's going to go. It's a disaster. So we're now trying to get rid of all of the timber bridges and put in precast concrete culverts and bridges to facilitate water flow and a, and, and, and a, a more climate resilient um, infrastructure to a, allow for that. So I would expect that going through this report, I had a, the, the reason to ask the question on Monday to the current accounting officer. If the person who allowed for overpayment in a particular ministry if he's still in the employ, and if he still has the same designation, and the answer was yes. So how do you know that this is not going to continue to happen? And of course, I had one of the opposition members know, because it's their period that is being scrutinized. Mm -hmm. We're trying to explain this away. If the person is on the fixed establishment, or if they are a contracted employee, whether you're under fixed establishment or a contracted employee, you are subject to the same set of rules. rules and regulations. Minister, should I tell you what? Um, it's been a long hour, but one with one quite hour is gone. A lot of information, yes. And I know you you can have another hour if you you you, you had the time. But um, I th I think it was quite a lot of food for thought, quite a lot of information, and maybe. For some, at least for me, the information that you shared this evening may have hit um, a lot of ears for the first time. Of course, the question remains the consequences, the spending, and um, the accountability for you know the transactions that you speak of coming out of the 2016 or the general report, um, you know, some of the findings. All right. So you want to thank you again for coming? I want to thank you for your time, and we want to wish you all the best um, as you continue to push on. But Mark, I want to thank you for allowing me to share this program, but I want to say to all public officers and public officials and public servants, follow the rules. Follow the rules. That's why there's a Fiscal Management and Accountability Act. That's why there's the stores regulations. There's a framework. Don't let anybody make you do what you're not supposed to do. Public monies must be spent properly. Has to be accounted for. And for every action, there are either benefits or repercussions. So let's do what is good. And I believe us from the People's Progressive Party, Civic we have been in government before, and we are in government again. The one thing we want is to ensure that public monies are properly expended. Thank you very much. You have been listening and watching uh, to Parliamentary Agenda. This evening we had with us Minister of Public Works, Juan Edgel, talking about the findings um, coming out of the 2016 Auditor General's report. I'm Mark Watson. Until our next program, do take care and have a splendid evening. Goodbye.